Okay, welcome traders to this week's live market analysis session um, with me, Patrick Munley. If you can hear me and you can see the tick mill welcome screen, because you just type a Y in the chat box, so I know we're ready to, uh, to get going. Good stuff. Okay, so before we jump into today's material, I uh, want to just quickly pay attention to the risk disclaimer. Uh, most importantly for today, any views or opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative of or representative of those held by Tickmill UK Limited or Tickmill Europe Limited. For those of you who are joining me for the first time today, brief introduction to myself. Uh, after I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup which was focused on C-suite executive search for tech startups. Having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets quite literally at times overnight, uh, with some university mates in investment banking and hedge funds, I decided to explore the markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500 or probably more appropriately day gambling and after some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into positions, eventually giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit on my personal capital. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and I sought out a mentor who had an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, I upped not just my technical game, developing a strategy that crucially suited my personality. I researched, developed extensively back and forward tested strategies, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. Most importantly though, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game and probably the most important watershed shift that occurred was me moving from being a highly goal oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading, which is simply a numbers game and you're playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying with the outcome of individual trades. I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even strings of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution that my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, from 2013, I've been managing investor capital through a managed account service, uh, delivering annual positive returns. And you can see the performance data on the screen. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm also a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to best-in-class online brokerage, Tickmill. Most recently, I have been retained as head of trading and trader education for an emerging trader education brand called fxcareerswap.com. We uh, offer development and funding to retail trading talent. And at FX Career Swap, we don't just develop retail traders' market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. And if you're interested in learning more about FX Career Swap, there's a number here on the uh, screen for the trade desk in London, uh, or you can email, uh, email the info at fxcareerswap.com and someone will get back to you with uh, more information on what we're doing there. Okay, so that uh, gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. What I want to do now is, uh, is jump into the charts. 
We're going to start today with the uh, the S and P five hundred. Um, we had uh, we had a little bit of a pullback uh, into or just post options expiration. As I mentioned last week, this is what we we're anticipating. Um, yesterday, we, uh, we we saw buyers step back into the market. Um, we've stalled out at the. I'll just go on to the intraday time frame to show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Uh, uh, we've stalled in terms of the uh, correction, uh, sorry, in terms of the uh, fresh buying in the market, we stalled out just at the 78.6% uh, retracement of the prior decline. Uh, S&P of, uh, oftentimes will trade into this 78.6% retracement and see a reversal. So today's going to be a crucial day because if we roll over um, from the current levels, then there's a chance here that we, uh, we're actually going to play a double correction for those who follow the intraday analysis, uh, the wave analysis that I do, uh, you'll know that uh, I identified this area as potentially being the bid zone uh, for this correction. And the reason why that is, is because we had an equal legs correction versus this structure here, I traded just into the support area and buyers stepped back in. But now where we're, where we're currently at in terms of uh, the price level sets up the potential for uh, a double corrective pattern. And what we'd be looking at there, if, if we can't get through this resistance area uh, versus this 4177, then we could see a move down to test 4107. That would be the next equal legs objective. And again, I'll be watching if we do trade into that area, bullish reversal patterns to look at, uh, at long positions. So it's gonna be a pivotal day today for the, uh, for the S&P as to whether or not we can take out uh, this 41.77 through the prior highs and then on to look at, uh, at the 4200 level. So the, <laughs> that's what we're looking at in terms of the S&P. Um, let's just get rid of those fibs and go back to the daily. But ultimately, what, uh, what I'm looking for now is uh, once this correction uh, does complete, uh, we should see new highs into uh, the beginning of May. And uh, I talked about this last week. So somewhere in between the uh, 5th and the 7th of May would be an ideal period if we can make new highs to complete this sequence, the current cycle that we're in. And then what I think we can see in May is a, is a bit of a corrective move uh, to uh, set up the next leg to the upside ultimately. So uh, we'll see how, uh, how we trade today. If we can get through these, this resistance area, then we're set to make new highs. Uh, if, we don't, if we roll over early in the session today, then we look for a test of 4108 and uh, we'll see if we can get an opportunity to do something on the long side there. NASDAQ. <clears throat> so similar scenario for the NASDAQ, um, whilst we hold resistance here, we look for support back into uh, this symmetry swing. So we're looking at this leg here, and then we're looking for the fifth wave extension. So we'd be looking for uh, 13,430, ideally in an equal legs, uh, an equal leg pattern um, would be what, uh, what we'd be looking for. Um, Let's check in with the Dow. Dow is still grinding it out to the upside here. Similar scenario to the S&P. If we can get through up into new highs, we look for a test of 35,000. And then if, uh, and then we can cons some consolidation, probably a consolidation type top move before we see a pullback in the, uh, in the early part of May. Uh, the DAX. <clears throat> looking to hold, if we can hold this level now, the 15,079, then again, we look for a new high to take us into that first week of May before we see a, uh, a deeper corrective move uh, develop. Let's take a look at the dollar index. Now, this is, uh, this is important with the dollar index. We're, in, we're coming into a pivotal period from a seasonal perspective because uh, May tends to be a very strong period from a seasonal perspective for the dollar index. And now when we look at uh, some of the other majors, we'll see we're, we're pretty, uh, pretty poised here to test some pivotal le levels into this pivotal time period. So the current setup here is that we, um, we make a new low in the, in the dollar index into the end of the month. 
ideally testing this monthly range of support and this ascending trend line. And then that should set up a, uh, a move higher in terms of the dollar index uh, in May. You'll recall that we were looking uh, back at the start of April and we had some, uh, some strong seasonals supporting the euro and suggesting we would see some weakness in the dollar, which is what's played out. Um, but now what we're looking for is we're looking for that trend to reverse in, uh, in May. Uh, and it could be um, that we actually play out a big equal leg target, which will put us into um, the yearly pivot in terms of the dollar index. Obviously we take it step by step, but that's one scenario that uh, we have to bear in mind. For now, what I'd be looking for is if we get into this 9025, 9030 area, 9050 monthly range support, bullish reversal patterns here into the end of the month should set up at least a three wave corrective move for this swing. Um, so that's obviously then going to, to feed into the other majors, which we will we'll look at shortly. We've got gold here. Gold coming into the resistance zone that we've talked about, this 1806, testing the yearly pivot from below. So if we see that, uh, that strength in the dollar, we'd anticipate that that would feed into, uh, into, uh, into gold. So what I'd be looking for is a move up into this area to, uh, to fail and then look for a three-wave corrective move in line with that dollar sequence. And then we'll see if, uh, if the buyers are home here, we'd, what I'd be looking for would be symmetry swing scenario. So we could see something like that. So equal to that last leg to the downside, um, which would put us back into uh, 1725 area. Equally though, and if the dollar um, plays out in terms of that equal legs objective, we still have an open equality target down here from this uh, 1959 high uh, at 1650. So if the dollar strength does really start to take hold in May, um, then what I'd look for would actually be for gold to make a new low and that to be a pretty significant buying opportunity to my mind as, uh, as that would complete the major correction, uh, the primary corrective pattern. And if we did get in there with that dollar trading up into the yearly pivot uh, at the same time, I think uh, those are going to be the key areas where we could see some really meaningful reversals. Crude oil, uh, looking for crude now as we hold at, uh, let me just bring in the extension tool. So versus this corrected pattern here, what we look for is crude to, uh, to roll over a bit here and test this 53 area. Again, if we're going to see some dollar strength in the, in the early part of May, that would suggest that we could see some, some pullback here in terms of crude. I think this will be a significant opportunity if we can get down into this equal legs area and get a bullish reversal pattern because that sets up uh, long positions to target the top side of the channel up into 78 um, would be the upside objective there. Copper has, uh, has had a good week, but we're now we're running up into resistance. We've got the uh, monthly and weekly range resistance coming in here, back into these prior highs. And we've got some pretty significant momentum divergence. So we could be looking at a double top in copper with this divergence. Um, and then that would set up another corrective leg to the downside. And uh, in what any wave technicians refer to as a, a flat. Um, so let's just see versus so what we've got here is this is the equal legs target versus this structure. And what we want to look at now is, um, let's just remove that. So if we do hold the resistance, it should set up for, uh, for this type of move. So move back down into, to test the base here before, uh, before the next leg to the upside. Bitcoin. Tough, uh, tough week for Bitcoin. We had that, uh, that sell off over the weekend. However, we have come into this trend line support. We haven't quite tested it yet. So I'm looking to see if we can get, uh, get a test of uh, 52,000 on the downside here. Bullish reversal patterns there could be an opportunity on the long side um, in terms of Bitcoin. So we'll see how, uh, how if we can get that full test uh, to set up. An opportunity on the long side. 
Right, so the dollar basket. So you can see a bunch of these now are all coming into some pretty interesting areas. Uh, we've got the dollar yuan here. Um, if we can hold uh, the current levels or into the monthly range support with the dollar index trading into its monthly range support, uh, then I think we set up another leg to the upside here and initially we'll be targeting 664.93 in terms of uh, dollar yuan. And so we'll, uh, we're coming off a major weekly support area here, but the fact that this is a three-way pattern is a little bit concerning for, uh, for getting too excited on the upside. So we'll see if we can hold, get some bullish reversal patterns, and that should set up another leg to the upside if the dollar index is going to, to play out as, uh, as I've mentioned. Dolly, <coughs> Dolly Yen, looking for a test of the trend line here at uh, 107.55. Watch for bullish reversal patterns. Certainly we can get back up into 109.33. If we can get through there, then we can think about retesting the prior highs, but this would be the initial objective here um, with the dollar yuan, uh, sorry, dollar yen. Swissy, similar story, looking for another leg just to get us down into this trend line, monthly range support, but weekly range support as well coming in 90.70 bullish reversal patterns there. And we can at least think about an equality objective versus this last swing. We'd be looking for it to play out in three waves, obviously, uh, initially anyway. Um, so this would be the setup we'd be looking at. So if we get down into this support area with bullish reversal pattern, then that sets up a move from that 9080 up into 93.33. Again, thinking about that dollar seasonality playing out. Dollar CAD, uh, tough day yesterday for Bulls. Uh, the, the, the setup looked pretty good for the Dollar CAD. I was, uh, I was watching it, but we obviously had the, B, uh, the BOC, Bank of Canada came out yesterday and were really the first central bank to really strongly hint at the potential for tapering. And so we saw some, uh, some CAD strength play out in the market. Um, We'll see now if we can get an, if we get another reversal today back up through these uh, this weekly range resistance, then the uh, the play could still be on for the dollar CAD to test into range resistance at one twenty seven eighty five. Uh, so the euro, obviously the inverse to the dollar index. The euro is the biggest constituent of the dollar index, and we can see here we have a uh, a cyclical uh, sorry a seasonal pattern uh, that suggests. 1st of May to the 28th of May are a week period for the euro dollar. So what would we be looking at? So I'm, the pattern I'm looking for is a move up into this descending trend line resistance, monthly range resistance, all coming in just above 121. And then from there, we could easily see a pullback into 1950, um, maybe uh, even lower back into this uh, 118.40 area. But certainly, I'm going to be paying close attention to how price plays out on this test of this uh, trend line resistance, especially as it, it appears as if it's going to coincide with uh, this end of month scenario. And uh, I think that's a, a very interesting setup and obviously has that strong seasonal support as well. Euro yen. <coughs> Another important, uh, another important um, seasonal pattern to, to, to think about is that uh, a lot of these yen crosses um, coinciding with a bit of weakness in terms of the, the potential weakness in terms of the uh, equity markets, uh, we often see corrective moves or pullbacks in terms of the, the yen crosses in, uh, in May as well. So we want to start, if we, if, if this euro yen is taking off today, I'll certainly be paying attention to how we trade on new highs into this 132, um, especially into the back end of the month here, uh, which would this would allow the RSI stochastic a few days to get back above 80. So if we're trading up into 132, uh, I want to pay close attention to that. Equally, we have, let me just draw this in for you. We have an equality objective it comes in a bit higher here, let's see. So we've got a 134. So if we get a blowout move here, we want to pay very close attention to how we trade at 134, especially if that's into, uh, into the start of the new month uh, for the Euro Yen. Euro Swiss, uh, still heavy consolidation here 
uh, driven by the cross flows, but still looking at 109.64 in terms of uh, the equality objective there for the Euro Swiss. Euro CAD, this is one I'm watching very closely. As discussed last week, we came into, uh, we've tested the symmetry swing resistance just shy of the equality objective one uh, at 152. Got a nice outside rejection candle yesterday, and uh, I'm looking for a break of this trend line to set short positions in the Euro CAD, um, targeting a move down to, uh, to test the, what would be the fifth wave objective here at 145. So paying close attention to this trend line and watching for a break. I mean, because of the flows we're seeing in terms of the uh, ECB, et cetera, today, we may push higher again, but watching for any rejection from this area with some follow through, I think that sets up a move to, uh, to get a look at 145 on the downside. Euro Kiwi, uh, potential inverse head and shoulders here developing in the Euro Kiwi. And uh, we've held this, well, we've been chopping around this trend line. Uh, we've held it for now. And so if, um, if, we, if we get a nice outside reversal today, there is the potential to, to be thinking about this scenario. Let's bring that in here. So we'd have the left shoulder there. Got a head down here. And then we're trying to um, carve out a right shoulder here. So we'll see how uh, how this develops as a uh, as a potential opportunity. Euro sterling should make a move now up into this equality objective, and then from there, I think we uh, we can start to think about fading euro sterling again for um, for new lows. So uh, keep an eye on eighty eight thirty to eighty eight sixty area cable. Um, again, with over the uh, over the May period, um, specifically, if we get if, if this dollar index strength starts to kick in, I think <clears throat> we still have another shot at testing um, downside equality objective versus this high here. So we could still see a rollover here in cable down to the 135.65 area. Um, we will have to see where we close today, but uh, there could be there could be an opportunity here with cable looking for this down. If, if the dollar index is going to strengthen as we anticipate, to, uh, to start to think about intraday looking at pullbacks in uh, in sterling to uh, to get short here. Sterling yen starting to weaken. I was looking for a move up into uh, 152.45, but it's a key trend line here to keep it an eye on. And if we break it, I think we're uh, we're open for some downside in terms of euro sterling. Uh, sorry, in, ster in terms of sterling yen. And again, if we think in terms of targets for this, for what we'd look for would be the equal leg. So we could have us down back back into 148 on the downside. So if this trend line goes, then, uh, then I think there's a good shot at seeing a, a test of 148 in sterling yen. Similar scenario here in terms of sterling Swiss. So it's almost identical setup. If we, uh, if we take out this trend line, then um, sterling Swiss could start to be thinking about making a move down to 123 back into that breakout point so uh keep an eye on these these uh, these trend lines here in terms of sterling it's uh it's starting to weaken up a bit aussie uh so still chopping really in this range um we're not uh, there's no clear setup as such here on the intraday charts they looked uh, they looked to be a pattern playing out, but uh, we haven't seen any follow through as of yet. So uh, sidelines the Aussie for now. The Aussie yen, if uh, if we can get up, if these equity markets are going to extend to the upside, uh, we could see the Aussie yen put in a, a, another high, a third high, three pushes up here. And if we can maintain the divergence, I think there'd be a shorting opportunity in the Aussie yen. 
From trade, I've got uh, I've got an order in to uh, to get short here. The Aussie CAD. Discuss this on uh, one of the Ticknor chart hits today. Uh, we've broken out the wedge. Nice impulsive move. Three wave corrective move into 50% retracement. Uh, symmetry swing resistance versus that last swing there. Nice outside rejection yesterday. We're weakening up here. So if we can get down through yesterday's lows, I think this is a nice. Uh, setup it has good, it has some nice seasonal supporting factors as well. And I think we can play for uh, for certainly an equality objective down into this 92.58 uh, area, which is also the uh, yearly pivot, which uh, which could get its first test there. So that's uh, that's one I've got on the books at the moment. This is one I'm watching um, for tonight. Sorry, bear with me. Um, the Aussie Kiwi here looking for um, an outside reversal. We've tested just shy of the equality objective. And, uh, and what I'm watching for is an outside reversal candle today, closing at or, bear with me guys, at or very close to the highs. And, uh, and I'd be looking to, uh, to set long positions, targeting the top side of the channel here. So uh, keep an eye on the close here with this Aussie Kiwi. Um, want to see it close at or just shy of the current highs to uh, to get in on the long side. Kiwi, um, what I'm looking for, what I was anticipating we might see here with the Kiwi, um, if we look at this leg here versus this leg here, doesn't look like we're going to make it now. Uh, I was going to see if we could get in there um, into this symmetry swing resistance 73.11, weekly range resistance 72.65. Bearish reversal patterns there would uh, would be of interest, but technically we could be doing a double correction here again. And uh, these are patterns that uh, it's worth becoming familiar with. Let me draw it in for you. So we have this one here, ABC. And then we have another ABC. So then we, what we'd be looking for would be another ABC to the downside to complete the pattern before we take off again. So again, thinking in terms of this, this potential dollar strength, we, uh, we could see a bit of a rollover here in terms of the Kiwi and carve out a double corrected pattern to uh, before we take off against the upside. Kiwi Yen, nothing for me to do there. Uh, the last two that uh, I'm paying close attention to at the moment are one is the CAD Swiss. We have had a nice pullback here into the 38.2% retracement. Had this nice impulsive move up into the upside, which subdivided nicely into five waves. And so we got a corrective pattern here. Um, big bullish outside reversal. If we can get through this trend line, then I'm going to be looking at long positions targeting new highs in the CAD Swiss. Um, so I'm keeping an eye on this, uh, this CAD Swiss. Equally, if we can get a nice, a nice inside day close towards the high of this candle today, that's also another high probability setup. And, uh, and that would have me looking for uh, long positions on the CAD Swiss. And last but not least, this is uh, another order I've got on the books at the moment, CAD Yen. We've seen a three wave corrective move into the equality objective. Big outside reversal yesterday. Now we get this nice bullish inside day here. So I'm looking to be long through uh, 86.90. And I'm targeting the top side of the channel up towards 89.38. Uh, and we can get a nice risk reward there by using protective stop just below uh, today's lows if the order gets filled. So that's where I'm at at the moment. Um, watching for some some more follow through, I guess, in terms of the CAD. I'm paying very close attention to uh, the, the close of the month with respect to the dollar index. And if we can test those pivotal levels, then I think there's going to be an opportunity to play some, some counter trend moves in terms of the, the FX majors uh, versus the patterns that we've seen play out in April. So uh, are there any questions? If there's a chart you want me to take a look at that I haven't covered, you can type it into the chat or I can unmute your mic. Um, and if, equally, if you don't have a question, it's helpful to type an N in the chat box so that I know we're all on the same page and I can wrap the webinar up here. Q and A, okay.
Okay, no questions. I'll, uh, I'll close this, uh, this session out here and uh, we will reconvene at the same time next week. Thanks very much for your time, everybody, and hope this helps.